Well, hello YouTube. Uh, my name is Joe. Uh, I am the shop teacher and uh, I am going to share with you today this little gadget right here. And this is a Wixi digital planer readout. Let's see if I got it right. Uh, and so it's uh, the whole idea is that most of the time these woodworking machines come with a scale, uh, a ruler. And on this situation, this is a Powermatic uh, 201HH. So it is a 22 inch wide helical head thickness planer. And uh, real good machine. However, I'm gonna show you a couple pictures here where the uh, ruler on it is really difficult to read. Uh, it, there is no significant line difference in between quarters and halves and only the one inch you know the zero the one the two those marks are a little bit longer it makes it really difficult to read and so uh, I went out searching and came across this item uh, I'm going to take you through a couple little images time lapses of installation and installation honestly from start to finish took right around an hour. Uh, I had to do a little bit of unboxing, uh, the uh, bag with the little fasteners, that came out. Um, I did watch a couple videos prior to that. I did take a look on this machine here to make sure that um, I wasn't going to uh, drill into something really important. Uh, you know, so I made sure I lifted the lid. I made sure that I uh, pulled those side covers off. I didn't want to drill a hole into a wire or a cable that would cause me lots of work. And so um, it uh, installation went really well. Uh, they have built into it quite a bit of flexibility. So if you're not quite square, uh, things are kind of finalized by a little magnet and uh, it, it really allows that flexibility, uh, if you will. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna bring you in, uh, just kind of wheel things around for you a little bit. Uh, we'll take a look at it. Like I said, I'm gonna be adding in some pictures from before. Uh, all in all, like I said before, it took me about an hour. Uh, you know, I had watched a couple videos ahead of time. Like I said, I did some work by opening up cabinets. Uh, I've got this still loose, so I wanted to make sure that I didn't drill into anything important um, and then of course I had to go get sockets and make sure that I had all the tools then I had to do some reading you know we got to do some reading once in a while and so uh, let me flip you guys around and, and show you how this works so bring that up so you can see that a little bit better so this is the digital readout uh, it looks to me like it's backlit a little bit. It does give you some options as far as, uh, you know, millimeters to inches. Of course, here in the United States, we continue to use inches. Uh, it does give you, right now I have it on the absolute thickness setting. Uh, however, if I wanted to change it to incremental, uh, I would be able to take off a quarter of an inch or sixteenth of an inch or whatnot. This is your on off switch, but it's also your calibration button. Um, and so we'll take you to the back side here in a second. But as I wheel this and you know, right now I am going thinner. Uh, one of the big things that I like is yes, it's digital, but every once in a while it pops around to that fractional number which matches with that digital and so as we're trying to teach students uh that 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 will help them understand their fractions a little bit better we don't use 29 6 30 seconds but we do use seven eights you know uh and then most of our boards are finishing right at that three quarter mark but really, quite honestly, if you're within, uh, like I said, numbers seem to be a little bit off. Uh, but if you're in five to ten thousandths in the woodworking world, uh, especially the high school woodworking world, you're in pretty good shape. Uh, 
Now I'm pretty sure that anytime these batteries go dead or if I have to disconnect this, I will have to recalibrate that. So let's go to the other side. Now this is the business end. Uh, and so you could see that I had a bracket down here uh, that I had to fasten in. And like I said, if you watched the time lapse earlier, you would see that uh, that was that was pretty simple. Uh, this is all cast iron. Like I said, I pulled this plate off earlier to make sure that I wasn't going to go into anything significant. Uh, I had to drill a hole through here. They came with these nice self-tapping screws. Uh, and then I just had like, this is almost like a castle nut here. So, or not castle nut, a uh, carriage bolt. And so you had to tighten that up. Uh, this is your sensor mechanism. And honestly, it just holds on with a little magnet there. And so as you wheel this up and down, your sensor here moves with it. Uh, you know, I, I can't say that we've used it yet. Uh, I ran a few boards, checking it out, seeing if it seems consistent. And it seems pretty consistent. Uh, we've just been used to using the ruler, uh, using your eyes, using the, the ruler. Uh, and so this will be a little bit of a game changer and I hope it's beneficial. I'm thinking I will probably print off some kind of um, fractional to digital, uh, excuse me, fractional to uh, decimal sheet and attach it up here to kind of just help those students see what's, what's coming, right? They can see the numbers get smaller. Uh, they can adjust it easier. Uh, I am pretty sure that probably every time the battery goes dead, uh, I don't know how long it'll run before it shuts off. But every time the battery goes dead, you're gonna have to recalibrate it. I'm guessing that this is gonna take a lot of calibration just from the little bit of time that I've spent with it. Uh, cable management comes with a couple little sticky tabs and a little wire holder. Uh, what I'd really like to do is figure out a way that I can just actually house the wiring and run it through here, maybe get some little rubber grommets uh, so that the wiring isn't coming underneath the machine. I can see that this, just that exposure is going to, um, it's going to get caught someday. Uh, and so uh, that, is, that is probably the, the weakest link in my opinion to the system. So uh, this is not a, a review. This is uh, this is what I got, and uh, I'm pretty excited. Uh, it was 75 bucks on Amazon, and I thought for that price, that's really reasonable. Uh, it's not a price I want to spend every year, but I thought that that was a real reasonable cost to get into a digital readout. Uh, why why a really expensive high-end power manic did not come with a digital readout i don't know uh, i don't have any answers for you there uh but i think that uh you know we're looking for accuracy uh some of these machinery and some of these companies need to jump in the game but i'm glad these aftermarket companies are coming along and so uh this is just something i'm doing uh this is just one of those other ways I'm trying to help my students uh, do a better job and continue to teach them um, good usable skills. Uh, and so, uh, take care, have a great day. If you are not a subscriber, please feel free to hit that button and check out one of these videos, right? So, uh, have a great day, guys. Bye.